amidst all these things in the world, boldness can come from Jesus. Strength comes from Jesus. He is the one you should focus on. Philippians 4.13 in KJV says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Undoubtedly, to say that our walk on earth is an easy one would really be a lie. I'd like to tell you that when you become a Christian, everything is straightforward from then onwards, but it's not. The devil is described as the God of this world. And when you give your life to Christ, it is as if a huge light goes on you in the spirit world that identifies you as a child of God. And the devil uses his vast but not infinite resources to go after you and your life. The truth is there are some seasons that are so dark, so low, you even ask yourself why this is happening to me. You feel as if you are going through hell. I'm not talking a bad day. I'm not talking about a bad few days or a little headache. I am talking about real calamity, real calamity. Calamity so deep, it can only be classified as hell on earth. And calamity can come in so many different ways. For instance, I've been called at 3 a.m. in the morning to counsel couples who have had domestic arguments. I remember pulling up in the driveway and I could feel the calamity and tension before I even entered into the home. A real difficult moment. The couple had said things to one another that would leave permanent scars on each of their memories. I've been there in tough moments when a member of the church lost her mother. Three years after she had lost her father, although the lady was in her 50s, she said something to me that stayed with me for the last 15 years. When I went to counsel her in the hospital, she said, Pastor, I've lost my mother now. I'm an orphan. And she broke down in tears, a grown woman. She had lost that person who was dearest and closest to her heart. Real calamity. You lose your job. I mean, when you're struggling to keep your head above water, I mean, you are right on the edge. You try and try, but there is no progress. One step forward, two steps forward, and you get knocked six steps back. And when you get knocked back, you break some stuff. You break your body or your heart is broken. And the only adequate world to describe your situation is hell. There is a breathtaking saying. I read in a Christian journal it stated, someone asked a man how he was, he replied, I'm going through hell. Said his friend, well, keep on going. That is no place to stop. When you are going through hell, keep going. Keep going. Don't you dare give up. I implore you, don't quit, don't frail. Just keep going, keep pushing. We actually want everything bright and fine, but no, we won't get it that way. Every day won't be a sunny day. The truth is that in the cause of life, there will be sunny days and stormy days. And the earlier we understand this fact, the better for us. You have to learn endurance and keep going on no matter what the sacrifice is. So, your questions are, how do I make it through this tough season in life? How do I survive through a life that doesn't seem to get better? How do I go up when it seems I'm going down? How do I face every day when yesterday felt so hard? 
then how do I get up and face tomorrow? But I tell you today, whatever it is you have been going through, try to endure it. Stick with God. Keep going. Don't walk away from God. Don't stop believing in God. Don't stop trusting God. Please persevere. You've got to make up your mind whether you want to be a victim or a victor. If you want to fight or retreat and be persistent. And Jesus said to him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Luke 9, 62, once you set your feet on this journey, it is unwise and even dangerous to look back. I am telling you today that no matter what you are going through in life, your challenges are not bigger than God. The situations that are causing you to shed tears are not bigger than God. The people standing against you are not bigger than God. Nothing in this life is bigger than God. This is the reason why you should remain bold and remain strong. Remember, greater is he that is in you than that which is in the world. God knew you before you were formed. He knew everything about you. God is with you and God is for you. Get this out of your head that God is against. God is not against. If I must be truthful to you, I must let you know that truly some situations are scary. There are things that will stand against your boldness. They will stand against your courage and you will be like one who is nothing. Who can help you overcome these things so you can get your boldness and strength? The psalmist asks the same question in Psalm 121 verses 1 through 2 in KJV. I will lift my eyes to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He admitted that his help can only come from the Lord. Your help can't come from your abilities. Your boldness cannot come from any other thing but the Lord. This is the time to move closer to God. You need him more than ever. You should ask Jesus Christ to set you on the right path. That is when you will be bold and be strong. Psalm 27, 1. In KJV, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Make the Lord Jesus your strength and you will never be devoid of strength to carry on in life. You will always remain a warrior and a victor in life. Conclusively, I would like to use this message as an encouragement to cheer you up in your walk with the Lord. Though you might be going through hell, I want you to know that the Lord is with you and he will deliver you in due time. Just keep your focus intact and trust the Lord to see you through. Just keep believing in his word. I know, I know, I know what the situation looks like. Romans 3, 4, let God be true and every man a liar. Let your situation be a liar and let God be true. I have seen numerous saints who struggle with bouts of God's absence as they negotiated critical illnesses or cognitive problems or prolonged periods of unemployment or receiving phone calls in the middle of the night because a wayward child has been arrested or the sudden death of a loved one who meant the world to them. And they felt life was against them. And I'm sure some of you feel that way right now too. You may feel as if circumstances are against you. You may feel as if your friends are against you. Your enemies are against you. You may even feel as if God is against you. Now, I want to tell you today, no matter the situation you are currently going through, 
I want to assure you that God will never leave nor forsake you. Hebrews 13.5 gave us the assurance that God will never leave us or forsake us, no matter the situation we go through in our lives. For God has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. In other words, you don't need a lot of money and a bunch of things. You need Jesus and he is with you always. Much of the military has a code. Leave no man behind on the battlefield. God operates by that code too. When you're in battle, God won't desert you. When you are suffering, God won't abandon you. On the contrary, God enters our suffering, just as he did through Jesus, suffering on the cross. We may feel abandoned, but we are not. I will never forsake you. In God, there are only possibilities. Nothing at all is impossible for Him to do as long as we believe. The scriptures are full from Genesis to Revelation with the incredible demonstration of God's power. God has not changed. He still carries the same measure of power He carried at the very beginning of time. If He could do wonders then, He can now. He has not changed. The impossibilities we see have more to do with us and the state of our hearts and the state of our faith. Our inability to believe robs us of the possibilities we have in God. Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? If we knew how boundless, limitless, and endless God's power is, we will certainly learn to trust Him more. Our unbelief comes from a lack of trust, which comes from the lack of God's Word living inside of us. We need to be filled with knowledge about Him, who He is, and what He can do. We need to get acquainted with His nature, and this can only come as we spend time with His Word. It is impossible for us to believe in a God we do not know. It is through His Word that we can get familiar with Him and the wondrous things He has done in the past. He is the God of all flesh, the one who created every living thing, everything beneath and above the earth, every living person, and every one person who has walked the face of the planet was created by Him. Every bird of the air and the fish of the sea was all created by Him. He has control over the universe because He made it. It is not possible that a potter will be unable to control what He molded. This is the case with God. Nothing that exists today exists without Him. Every created thing must submit to the Lord. Within the power of humans, there are limitations. But whenever God is involved, limitations are eliminated. Everything and anything at all is possible. The very nature of God is unlimited. Everything that sums up the Father has no end. And His power is also like that. Luke 1.37 says, For nothing will be impossible with God as long as God is in your journey. Be rest assured that all things are possible to you. It is only in the realm of humanity that we can be limited. God is not limited. All you need is to believe. Let your mind open up and imagine things beyond human capacity. Do not restrict the Father. Did He not part the waters and the children of Israel walked on dry land? Did He not supply manna to His children? Did He not guide them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night? Did Sarah, 
not bear a child in her old age even though she didn't believe it? Did God not hear Hannah's cry? Above all, did he not raise Jesus Christ from the dead? So tell me, what can he not do? Matthew 19, 2. But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Have faith in God. We grossly underestimate the importance of faith to God. Abraham believed God so much that it was imputed to him for righteousness. In your situation today, do you believe in God? Do you believe that God can do it for you? Do you? If you have no faith, you have no breakthrough. If you have a little faith, you have a little breakthrough. If you have big faith, you have a big breakthrough. All of God's response is a response to our faith, to faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. All you need is the faith of a mustard seed. It does not take great faith to believe in a God that never fails. I wish I could tell this to each of you individually, that God is faithful. He has never failed. Failure is not in his nature. And he will not fail you. The God of this Bible is still Jehovah Jireh. This book clearly states he will make you the head and not the tail. He will make you above and not beneath. He will give you vineyards you didn't plant and wells you did not dig. He plants you by streams of living waters so that whatever you do shall prosper. Only believe in the God of this Bible. There is nothing more powerful than your faith. Yes, you have been praying, but do you have faith? Yes, you have been fasting, but do you believe? Real faith can grab God's attention in heaven and move him into action on your situation. Mark 5, 36, do not be afraid, just believe. God has not left you. God is with you. You are going to make it. When you think you can't take another step, when you think you can't live another day, when you think you can't take another disappointment, reach out in faith to the God that winds and waves obey. He holds the seven seas in the palm of his hand. He calls the stars by name. He measures the heavens with the span of his hand. He is the rock of your salvation. He is the cornerstone, precious, and elect in Zion. He is my shelter in the storm. The people who enjoyed the greatest dimensions of God's power in the scriptures were those who believed in the sovereign power of God. Daniel and his three Hebrew friends were unshakable in their faith because they believed strongly in God's ability to deliver them. Do you believe that God can take care of you? Just because something looks impossible for you doesn't mean it is impossible for God. Do not use your human assessment and judgment to measure the greatness of God's power. God does not need a greater dimension of power to move in your situation. It has more to do with the posture of our hearts. The enemy has robbed us of so much by restricting us with the things we can see as God's children. The supernatural should be natural to us. Our Father is supernatural in His workings and He wants to reveal Himself to us as a supernatural God. If a doctor has told you that your sickness has no cure, what does God say about it in his word? We are told that Jesus has borne our sicknesses and diseases, every single one of them. Where human beings cannot find a way, God sees multiple ways. 
and he will lead you through that way. All we need is to believe. The poorest men have become one of the wealthiest people today. Look at what happened to Joseph. He went from a prisoner to the second most powerful man in 24 hours. There is no rags to riches story like Joseph. For 14 years after the dreams, he went to hell on earth. But the God of the impossible turned his life around in 24 hours. How can we explain these things? We have a God whose power who defies the norm, does the impossible, and renders the laws of nature and science void. If you are in the middle of a seemingly difficult situation today, know that God's power can handle it. You cannot afford to give in for the enemy to rejoice. If you feel like your faith is being tested, hang on. Just keep believing in his word. I know, I know, I know what the situation looks like. Romans 3, 4, let God be true and every man a liar. Let your situation be a liar and let God be true. The God of heaven will show himself mighty to you. If he could do the impossible for the people of the old covenant who had not yet been redeemed, how much more the children of God for whom Jesus Christ has shed his blood on the cross. If it is impossible, if nature and science prove that it will be possible, then it is no longer faith. Your faith comes to play in the midst of impossibilities. Faith is displayed when our dependence is solely on God and nobody else. Fill your mind with the testimonies of God's word and not what you see around you or what others say. Man is limited in what he can do, but our Father is not. Consume his word to the point where it becomes the only thing you believe. This is how to enjoy the supernatural. Do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Exodus 14, 13 through 14. When Job was trying, he kept believing, and God showed up for him to restore all he had lost in multiple folds. I just want to encourage you today, keep believing, keep holding on. Your time will come. Our Lord Jesus rested on God in the demonstration of power. It is when we dare to believe that we enjoy God's supernatural power. Dare to believe today. Dare to speak God's word. Shut your eyes to the impossibilities you see and your ears, the discouraging words you hear. Keep your faith alive and all things will be possible for you. So a word of encouragement for you today. If you have experienced battle after battle after battle, know that something is about to happen for you. If you have experienced struggle after struggle, after struggle, know that something is about to happen for you. But you have to have faith. You need to continue to believe in God. God does everything in his time. What the story of Joseph tells us is that remember when God moves, something can occur in a nanosecond that would take you months or years to accomplish if you could do it at all. He went from a prison to a king. Why? Because his time had come. Joshua 10, verses 12 to 14. At that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still at Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Aijalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stopped in the midst of heaven and did not hurry to set for about a whole day. 
There has been no day like it before or since, when the Lord heeded the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. The Israelites were at the war front, and time was no longer on their side. It was getting dark. All Joshua did was cry out to God, and God heard him. Not only did the sun and moon stop so that Joshua and his army could continue fighting, but God also caused a mighty tempest to attack the Canaanites with rain and hailstones. God did more than Joshua asked. This affirms what Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. God will always do much more than we can picture in our hearts. This story of Joshua is telling us one thing. It is saying that if God is with you, there is nothing you cannot achieve. If you read through Joshua chapter 10, you'll see that Joshua fought so many battles there and he won all of them. Do you think the plans or the strategies that Joshua was employing was the reason they conquered all? The only reason they had victory is because of God. God was with them all through the battle. Joshua 10 verse 42 All these kings and their land Joshua took at one time, because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. Why should you and I involve God in all we do? The first reason is because He is God. The first and the most simple reason why we Christians must learn to involve God first in everything is that He is God. He is the Almighty God. He is the Omnipotent. He has the power to do anything. Anything you can think of, God will do it. He has done it before, and He will do it again. That is why you must involve God in everything. Why should God be the last person we are running to? Christians have the habit of doing things without involving God, and then when it becomes bad, they run to God. The most irritating of it is that some will go to the extent of blaming God for what they did not even invite Him to take control of. God should never be the last on your list. He should be the first, and every other thing will fall in place. Matthew 6 verse 33 But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek God first. Put God first. Remember, for the sake of the children of Israel and the prayers of Joshua, God stopped the sun from moving. He stopped everything from moving. This is what God can do for you. He can command nature for your sake. He will defy any scientific law for your sake. What God is saying to you today is focus on me and not the battle you are going through. Seek my kingdom first, and my kingdom will fight for you. The second reason is, is that he is greater than the powers of the world. 1 John 4 verse 4 You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. What power is in the world? What are people saying in this world? Are they saying it is not possible? Are they saying there is no way for you or is there no help from the Lord for you? The Bible says the one in you is greater than the powers in the world. Do you have God in you? It is a pity that many Christians don't know the power they carry in them. 
That is why they allow the devil to push them around and beat them down. If you have Christ in you, you have the power in you. When people from the world say you are a failure, the power in you is saying you are a success. When the powers in the world are saying there is no way for you, the power in you is saying you should keep moving forward. There is a way for you. Why should you worry about the powers that are in the world? Why should you think these powers in the world will defeat you when you have a greater power? Joshua 10 verse 8 And the Lord said unto Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. Joshua stood on God's promise and refused to give up even when it looked like they would not have the victory God promised them. Time was no longer on their side, but he held God by his word and dared to believe the impossible. Now let's look at your life. What impossible situation are you going through? You see, time was running out for Joshua. So what do you do when time is against you? What do you do when the clock keeps moving and you are not where you thought you would be in life? What do you do when the years and months keep flying by and the wrinkles on your face begin to form? I want to remind you, never lose hope. Have faith in God. Just like Joshua, even in the face of the toughest challenge, keep your faith alive. You see, you can. God can give you the ability to accomplish something that would normally take 30 years to accomplish in one day. He is not limited. But there are two things you need to do. Firstly, have faith in God. And secondly, don't give up. Hold tightly onto His promises. God deliberately assures us with His word ahead of time so that we have something to hold onto when it seems too tough. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. 1 Peter 3 verse 12 there is no situation too tough for the Father to handle. As long as we call to Him, He hears us and answers us. The problem with many of us is that we fail to call on God in our difficult times. If you are going through a difficult season in your life, don't get desperate, don't get distressed, don't forget God. You have a God who is in heaven who has his ears open to hear your prayer. Instead of praying, we resolve to complaining and talking to people who have no help to offer us. God moved because Joshua called out to him. If you want God to move for your sake, let him hear your voice. Cry out to him. All the help you need lies in him alone. The devil will try to keep your lips sealed. Break free. Speak to your Father. Our prayers move God to action. Pray about that situation. Though many of us pray, we don't believe. Somewhere in the corridors of our hearts, we doubt if God can really do something about the situation. Joshua had never heard of such a feat from God, but he believed in God's ability to do anything. His mind was opened up to the possibilities. He was confident that God would show up for him in any way. God has all the power and resources to do anything. He cannot be restricted by anyone because nobody gave him his power. Our unbelief is the reason why it is so difficult for us to receive from God. God will move heaven and earth for your sake. He will defy the laws of science and nature for your sake. He will do anything for you. The things that are impossible with men are possible with God. Mark 9 verse 23 
And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for him who believes. Joshua chose to believe the impossible. His mind was opened up to possibilities. He trusted God to hear him and answer him. This is what God wants to see in us. Open your mind up to believe anything. With God, anything is possible, anything at all. God specializes in making a way where there seems to be no way. He parted the Red Sea. Who could have thought? He made water flow out of a rock. He sent ravens, the stingiest of all birds, to take food to Elijah. Right from the beginning of time up until this day, God has been specializing in the impossible. Dare to believe. God is able. I am sure that when Joshua was in the middle of that battle and he realized he needed the sun to stand still, he had flashbacks of the God who led the children of Israel out of Egypt and that built up his faith. I am sure Joshua saw God sending the plagues in Egypt, the frogs and lice and the boils. He saw God separating the Red Sea and turning their enemies into fish food. He saw the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. He must have gone back down memory lane at the fact that God had never failed him. Wait a minute, the same can be said in your life. If we look at your life and all the times God has come through for you, has someone here been healed? Has God made a way for you in the past when there seemed to be no way? Don't forget God. He hasn't brought you this far to leave you here. The reason why a lot of us give up is because we focus on the situation. We look at the winds and the waves, and we don't focus on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We look at how big and bad the enemy is, but we don't focus on how all-powerful and wonderful our God is. In Matthew 14, 22-33, there is a powerful story about faith here, and I think we can all relate to it. The disciples were in a boat on the sea, when suddenly they saw a strange sight. It was Jesus walking on the water. This troubled them as it would the average human being. Verse 26 tells us they were troubled, saying it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. Verse 27 says, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, Bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Just imagine, Peter began walking on the water. The chapter continues on to say, But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? You see, when he took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the wind and waves, he began to sink. That's why a lot of us give up. We take our eyes off Jesus. We take our eyes off God. We take our eyes off the Word of God, and we look at the winds and waves of life. We begin to look at how bad our situation is. We forget to look at the God who specializes in turning bad situations around. We are focusing on how impossible the situation looks and we don't focus on the God of the impossible. Yes, as humans, the situation may seem hopeless. When you look at the situation through human eyes, it is impossible. But when you look at it through the eyes of faith, it suddenly is possible. That is why you must walk by faith and not by sight. 
What we see in this world is limited. What we see through faith is unlimited. The world cannot move mountains, but your faith can. It is impossible for you, but not for the God you serve. Through faith, He can change your life. Don't forget God. Focus, focus on God. Focus on the Word of God. When you focus on the Word of God, you meet the God-man Jesus Christ, and He is the standard we should aim for. He is the gold standard for Christian living. When you read your Bible, you find your Savior Jesus Christ, and in this Bible, you will learn to follow His example. What He said, we ought to say. What He did, we ought to do. How He lived, we ought to live. His ministry lasted for three years, and in those years, He changed the history of the natural world and spiritual world. Jesus knew His purpose and was motivated by it. This is why He said in John 9, 4, I must work the works of Him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Jesus was a motivated man who was focused to complete His mission here on earth. He went after his destiny. He was not a quitter. He had a job to do and he did it. He knew his purpose and he was focused. Not once did he ever stray. Not once did he ever lose his way. No, he was focused on the mission his father sent him to do. And I am here to tell you that God has placed dreams and missions in your life and it is your duty to fulfill them. It is your duty to stay focused. Do not be distracted by the storm around you. Focus on God. Focus on Jesus and you will stay afloat. Go after your dreams. Go after your destiny as a child of God. You have no right to give up. It's not in you to give up. It's not in you to give up. Every word in this Bible tells you to be strong. Press on, endure, fight, and that's what you need to do. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9 is a command. Don't be a hearer of the word only. You need to be a doer of the word. And what does Joshua 1, 9 tell you to do? Be strong and courageous. God created and God fashions you for great and mighty things. You are designed to soar with the eagles. Deuteronomy 28, 13 states, The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. This is the word of God. You as a believer need to know that you are above and not beneath. Now the devil tries to attack your faith and cause unbelief to crop up in your heart. He will throw fiery darts at your mind and thoughts will come into your mind that say, I am not on top. I am struggling to pay my bills. I am not on top. My health is deteriorating. I am not on top. My marriage is in a mess. I am not on top. I've been divorced. But you must not allow these types of thoughts to occupy your mind. They are meant to distract you from focusing on God. Keep reading the Word of God. Let the Word of God fill your mind. Keep believing in God's Word. Keep focusing on God's Word. The Bible is a book that changes men. When you saturate your spirit in God's Word, you can keep believing. It will transform you from a coward to a warrior, from a loser into a winner. Because in Christ, there are no losers. This book doesn't encourage giving up. Focus on the Word. Focus on the Word and your faith will grow. Child of God, don't give up. Don't give up. Your time is coming. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your marriage or relationship. Don't give up on your goals, ambitions, and aspirations. Keep grinding and keep going. Don't let time discourage you. Don't let discouragement cause you to give up. If the odds are stacked against you, 
Don't let that make you settle for less than you deserve. Remember you serve a God who specializes in defying the odds. God loves an underdog. And if you are an underdog, you are a candidate for God's help only if you don't give up. That's why the Bible says, Galatians 6, 9, don't get weary in well-doing, for in due time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Let me translate this verse for you. Don't stop. Don't stop. Your time is coming. Your time is coming. You just got to be patient. And remember, remember, Jesus is with you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus has a name above all names. He is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of all Lords. He is the greater than the greatest. He is higher than the highest. He is stronger than the strongest. He is the mighty God. He is the living God. He is the Emmanuel, God with us. He is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the one who was and who is. He is our rock and our fortress and he is telling you today don't give up there is a video i saw and it spoke about the importance of encouraging yourself and not waiting around for people to do it for you it said god did not bring you through all the hell you've been through to leave you right here Tell yourself, Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Tell yourself, Deuteronomy 28, I am the head and not the tail. Tell yourself, Psalm 18, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Tell yourself, Psalm 20, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Tell yourself, Romans 8 37, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Tell yourself, Romans 8 31, if God is for me, who can be against me? Tell yourself, Philippians 4 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Tell yourself, Matthew 17 20, our faith can move mountains. Tell yourself, Job 13, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That is the truth. In whatever fight you are going through right now, you have to encourage yourself, just like David did. David didn't look to anyone else to encourage him. David encouraged himself. Keep fighting. Keep fighting and never give up. Keep working. You have to pull out your determination and keep going. You have to pull out your will and keep going. God will not let you down. He will never leave you or forsake you. Remember, God is for you, not against you. You need to keep fighting. You can do it. Through Christ, all things are possible. The devil does not stand a chance. Make sure you subscribe to the new Line of Judah Prayer channel. Click the link in the description.